What's standing in the way of your success and what can you do to fix it? Whether you have a brand new idea or you're somewhere on the path to commercializing your great idea, there will come a time inevitably that you will face obstacles and probably many on that path and find yourself feeling stuck and confused. But what can you do to overcome those obstacles and make a plan to chart your course for success? Hi, Lisa Lloyd here with more tips, tricks, and strategies to help you optimize and accelerate your invention licensing business success. If you like what you learn here today, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. They are a free way to support me doing this. And if you hit that notification bell, you'll be the first to know whenever I post a new video. I believe anyone can be successful in business. It may not happen with every idea you have, but I don't have a college degree and yet I've licensed seven of my own products and helped many other people do the same thing, earning more than $30 million in sales from my own products. And the one distinct common trait that all success stories have in common is that they didn't stop problem solving once they finished the invention. So let me illustrate with one case study, we'll call it, from my own experience. This is my CO2 powered airbrush. When I first had the idea, it was bigger than anything else that I had ever invented, and I knew that I was going to need a lot of help. Now, for a lot of people, and in fact, even me, still to this day, I really have to count that cost because I know the investment of time and resources that it's going to take when it's a truly big idea. And evaluating that, I decided that the best way to overcome the obstacle was to start by seeing if I could find an engineer to test whether or not my concept, my theory, my hypothesis would even work. So I interviewed several engineers, but I found them all to be extremely expensive, especially since I didn't know for sure if the idea was even possible. It seemed like a lot of money to spend to test an idea. Then one night I was attending one of the Inventor Association of Arizona meetings, which is a nonprofit that I co-founded with my mother here 30 plus years ago. And we had a gentleman who was a self-proclaimed garage engineer. That means he didn't go to school for it, but he had all the tools and he loved it and was really good at making things. He offered to do it for, I don't know, two, three thousand dollars and I felt like that cost was worth at least testing if it was possible because he was pretty confident he could figure out how to make it work. So challenge number one, overcome. Well, it took him nearly two years of painstaking moment by moment waiting which felt like an eternity for him to come up with the solution. And I didn't obviously want to be a pest or a high maintenance client for him. So I did my best to deal with it delicately and only checked in with, in with him maybe once a month or so. But he definitely had a lot of challenges in getting it done. Fortunately, I had other ideas I was working on in the background. So I kept those other ideas and even got a couple other products, three other products licensed in the time that he was still working on that product. When he was done, he came to me with something that we would call a proof of concept. In other words, it worked, but not perfectly. It had some issues with sputtering. The air just the airflow didn't come from a 2300 PSI or whatever it was originally down to a 12 to 15 PSI easily. So we needed to figure out how we could and if we could even solve that problem next. I called on a company that made CO2 devices called Instapump. It was a bicycle inflation device that used a CO2 that when you, when you twisted it, it Im immediately shot the entire air into a bicycle tire and pumped it up. So they had a lot of distribution into bicycle stores and even massive retailers, but they didn't have any distribution in the cosmetic industry, which is what my device was being created for. Now, what's really interesting is they had already been inventing, working on and invented a regulator to manage the flow of the CO2, but they had no application for it. So it had been sitting in their back office, just doing nothing but collecting dust for some time. Now, they were confident that their regulator would do the job that I was needing, and they were willing to license my device and manufacture it. However, they didn't have the sales distribution in place for, again, my use case. Next problem to overcome. And in addition to that, one of the owners wasn't a super fan of mine. And for whatever reason, he just wasn't really into working with me. And that created some challenges along the way that I really had to very delicately work through. I never knew why or what the problem was. I just know that he didn't like me. And sometimes that happens, personalities clash. I didn't have a problem with him. Whatever it was, I needed to navigate that at the same time that I was trying to do the licensing deal with him and his partner in the company. 
And fortunately, we were able to get it done with some really creative strategic thinking. We sat down and we talked about what we both wanted most, what we wanted to be doing with our time and resources. And they just wanted to continue to make and sell what they had, although they were willing to add my device into their manufacturing process, they weren't willing to change their business model and add salespeople and distribution in the cosmetic business. I needed their regulator and they weren't willing to license just the regulator to me. They wanted to make the whole device. So I agreed to license the manufacturing rights to them and retain the selling rights. And as part of that, anything that I sold in addition to the royalties from the licensing agreement, I would be paid or compensated with a commission as well. It's worth noting also that during this period of negotiating with them, which probably took another six, eight months to really work through how we were going to make that successful for both of our business strategies, I also needed to find a cosmetic company or a liquids scientist that could help me work through what the liquids would be that would be used in the device to ultimately create what we wanted. And we wanted three use cases for it. We wanted nails. We wanted to be able to paint nails with it by airbrushing, just like you do at the salon, but with the portable device. We wanted to create a tattoo type device where you could do henna paint and other types of body art. And then we wanted a liquid that would also work for tanning spray. So three different types of liquids. Now, of course, Research and development for something like this, especially with a a large FDA approved lab, was looking at fifty to a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, a lot of money. But the owner of the company and I had spent quite a bit of time talking about the device, the purpose, what my plan was, the companies and the team players that I all had in place to help make it happen. And they agreed to do the research and development on the liquids for the purchase of the product. And then I would get paid a commission on those sales later instead. So my proof of concept would demonstrate how it would work. The art would demonstrate how beautiful it would be in the packaging and when it's finished and injection molded and all of that. And then the liquids I had also now to be able to demonstrate with my device when I went out to sell it. So all I had to do was find the right company to sell it to, right? (laughs) That's easy enough. Well, I decided to go to one of the biggest cosmetic shows in the country. It's Cosmoprof in Las Vegas. And I knew that Helen of Troy would be there. They're a two, approximately, a little less than $2 billion company, publicly traded. And I knew that the vice president of marketing would be, be there. And that was exactly the person that I wanted to speak with, along with all of these other companies. So that if for some reason I couldn't get a deal with them because they were my ideal partner, then I had plenty of other distributors that I could consider go working with. Now, keep in mind... I didn't want to be in the business of selling. I wanted to license it, but the company I licensed it to couldn't sell. So my next best alternative as I thought through how to solve that problem was to work with a single distributor that had enough distribution. Well, I did an exclusive sale with Helen of Troy in exchange for their first purchase order, which was $1.2 million. And of course, when we were going through the process and I demonstrated the product and showed them the art and explained the liquids, they felt like they needed to still go find the liquids. Well, I explained to them I already have a relationship with the company who are indeed this for us and that they could certainly interview them and make sure that they were the pricing was right and everything was was in line for what they needed. So they flew out, met with the cosmetic company and agreed that that was the right place to go. Then we put the cosmetic company together with the manufacturer and they ended up having it made in a maquiladora in Mexico and all assembled there in the packaging, which meant the liquids had to be shipped down to Mexico from Arizona and then transported back across in all of the packaging, of course, and delivered to the distributor who then would sell it to all of their retail customers. So as you can see, there were so many different challenges that I faced and obstacles that would have been reasons. And they were big. Like these weren't little problems like, how am I going to find 15 minutes today to reach out to three different companies by email or contact them on LinkedIn? I mean, those are little hurdles. These were huge hurdles that I had to come up with answers for. And I could have quit at any moment. But I went into problem solving mode. I treated it with a critical mind critical thinking in that I was solving a problem each and every step of the way until I knew for sure that I could overcome each and every one of them in a way that would lead to the success, the ideal success that I had in mind, which was passive income. 
And that is ultimately exactly what it became for me. I'm just so glad I didn't quit. So isolate whatever problems you're facing and use your creative thinking skills to take calculated steps and overcome every obstacle. And if you're not sure how to do that, use the link in the description below to book a free strategy call with me and I'll help point you in the right direction. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and dare to dream and imagine what's possible when powered by innovation.